Now the girls all get prettier at closing time How they all begin to look like movie stars How the girls all get prettier at closing time When the change starts taking place It puts a globe on every face Of the fallen angels Of the backstreet boys Oh no The fallen angels Of the backstreet boys Welcome back folks We're talking with Connie Hansen Marshalline about Urban Cowboys Behind the Scenes Secrets. Now, Connie, tell us about the actual lines and, and how you were cast into this role. Well, it was kind of unusual because I thought it would be unusual because I thought that I would be reading my own lines, lines of Marshalline. Yeah. Um, but I, they gave me, so, you know, do you know what sides are? I don't. What is oh, it? What are sides? Okay, a side is just a portion of a scene. Okay. That has at least two uh, characters in it that can go back and forth, and usually the casting director will read one character, and then the auditioner, me, would read the other. Okay. And so it's just a you know small one pager usually of it's a portion of a scene, and so they handed me. They handed me the side, and I looked at it, and the dialogue said "sissy," and I thought, "They've already cast Deborah Winger in this. Why am I reading for sissy?" You know, and uh, so I just went ahead and read it. And so, anyway, Sherry read the opposite part, and I read sissy's lines. Okay. And the reason was because there was no Marshalline. There were. Wait a minute. So you're reading Sissy's lines because mm -hmm. they hadn't even cast, they haven't even wrote lines for Marceline yet at this time? They didn't have a Marceline yet. So what are you doing there? Okay, so what happened was they found my picture the day I, you know, dropped okay. my picture off. Yeah. And um, it was the picture. It just, it was just the picture. They saw the picture and the casting people said, Oh my gosh, this is what we've been looking for. We needed, and I didn't know all this. I mean, I, I, I had no clue what was going on behind the scenes. They needed a foil to play off of Sissy okay. and Wes. Okay. You know, they had Pam and Sissy and John, yeah. but they were thinking that they were missing uh, a piece, that they needed... Uh, another character, another female that could be like a backstabbing rhymes with witch, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that yes. could play off of <laughs> Sissy and Wes, that triangle. Okay. So folks, basically what we're, what we're listening to here is, is that a, uh, you had almost around 923 year olds and they chose Connie's picture who was 32, I, I told you it was sexy. Yeah, I guess so. Whatever. <laughs> Not my favorite picture over time. Either. Well, it was obviously Not their my, favorite picture at the time. And Not my favorite picture. But <laughs> the picture is what got me the job. Amazing. Okay, so I'm reading, and they go, whisper, 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 and they go, I think we found our Marshalline. And that was it. I That's got perfect. I got the part that day. Immediately they said, you're in. And I thought, okay, what do I do next? And they said, we'll send you a, a shoot schedule so that you'll know when you have to be here. And a limo will pick you up and drive you to the set. And that's about it. You know, just wait for your, your um, I guess they mailed it to me. Okay. I hate to date myself, but here I go again. We didn't yeah. have fax machines. No internet, machines. no fax machines. <laughs> no. I, I get they it. They hadn't been no. developed. No, I got yeah. it. I think, I think I got it through the mail. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, I, that's the only way I think I could have gotten it. Okay. That yeah. sounds that's funny. Yeah. So when you were being cast in this role, where did you live in, a, in congruent to um, the set. Bud, oh. Sissy, the set, right, and right. you. How, how okay. did you get there? I lived in Memorial, okay. which is I-10 West. 
if you're leaving Houston, say you're heading to go to San Antonio or, or even Austin, you would most of the time, if you're heading to San Antonio, you would take I-10 West. Okay. And I lived in Memorial. And John and Deborah had rentals just a couple of blocks from where I actually lived. But I actually lived in my real house with my family. Okay. So you were you were living real close to the set. How did you get back and forth of the set? Well, I drove my car okay. near the in the Galleria area again, and they had um, there was a, a very famous uh, store called Sakowitz okay. on uh, South Post Oak, and they had a huge parking lot. It was a, a women's women's store, women's department store. All right. And uh, I would drive there, and then um, the limo. Would be waiting. Whose and, limo was that? Was that uh, your limo? Paramount. Okay, Paramount. Paramount's okay. Uh, limo rental, you okay. know. And so I would get in, and usually Deborah was in the the limo, and we would ride together. I don't. I think I'm guessing they probably picked her up at the house. Okay. Because she was the star. Sure. They probably didn't realize that I lived a couple of blocks from there. They could have, you know come by and pick me up. But anyway, I, I rode I rode with her most of the time. If the traffic was really, really bad, and it can be really bad in Houston, it starts around three o'clock and it just gets worse. And if it was a shoot day that did not involve Deborah, then I would take Armadillo Airlines. Armadillo and, Airlines. Yeah. What is that, a small commuter plane or <laughs> it was there were six helicopters. Helicopter. And they all had giant logos of armadillos on it. Wow. And um, the guy who actually uh, uh, built the company came mm -hmm. up with the name and the concept and everything, he invented the weed eater. The weed eater? Yeah. He made a fortune on the weed eater. Wow. So he set up Armadillo <laughs> Airways, and I would drive my car there, leave my car on their lot, and get in and fly to the set. Wow. So when you're when you're in there in the limo, actually uh, talking to Deborah or what you thought was Deborah, I thought it was Deborah. How were the conversations? How would the conversations go when you were trying to talk to her? <sighs> have you ever been to Williamsburg, Virginia? I have not. Okay. <laughs> All right. This happened to me in Williamsburg, Virginia. It's the same thing that happened with Deborah and me. When you go to Williamsburg, Virginia, it's a colonial thing. Yes. It's all original, you know. It looks like a movie set, but it's Williamsburg, Virginia. And it's all of the employees that work for the Williamsburg company okay. dress in uh, colonial attire. Okay. And if you go in some of the shops in Williamsburg and you ask them a question, like, where is the nearest uh, restaurant? Or where is this or where is that? They answer you as if they were living in colonial times. They stayed in character the yeah, whole the entire whole time. The whole time, yes. Wow. The whole entire time. If you're riding in a buggy and you've got somebody cracking the whip and you're going down those, you know, cobblestone streets of Williamsburg and you want to ask them a question, if I did it nowadays, I'd mm -hmm. say, uh, my cell phone needs a recharge. Do y'all have a cell phone place or an Apple place where I can buy a charging unit for my phone? They would say, "Milady, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> That's the way <laughs> Deborah was. Okay, so I got in the limo with her, wow. and I would try to have a conversation with her. But every time I'd ask her something, she'd answer me as sissy. So years later, when people said, what was Deborah Winger like? What was she like? What, you know, tell me something about Deborah. Was it fun to work with her? And what she like as a person? And she was, was just she, like Sissy. And she was exactly <laughs> like Sissy because she never broke character. <laughs> wow. She was a method actress. And she, when she was off the set, she was still Sissy. When she was in her rental, she was Sissy. If she went out to dinner, she was Sissy. She never broke that. So I never got to know her because all I got to know was Sissy. She was never there. And John was the same way. I was way. just going to ask, is John had to have been the same, same way. Same. Okay. And Wes, same. Same way. All, yes. 
all of them were the same. Wow. They were all staying in character all the time so that they didn't, you know, slip up and, you know, become themselves in a in a scene. You know, they always were playing their character roles. And I remember one particular time where Deborah stayed up intentionally all night long, all night, all day, uh, just prior to the graveyard scene. Okay. When Uncle Bob was buried. Where she looked like. She looked so bad, <laughs> but she looked like she was going to just fall on the ground. Yeah. And she was, she, I mean, but that's method acting. Right. So she stayed up all night so that she, when she did that scene that afternoon, the next afternoon, that she looked pretty rough. Wow. Yeah. So in any of the other scenes, um, I, I noticed that on online sometimes, um, folks, that there's questions online that, that Connie will eventually, hopefully, be able to get her on here again and be able to answer. Now, one of the questions that I, or maybe it's a comment that I remember reading here, was um, Marceline didn't look all that pretty on set. And, and let's go back for just a second. And her casting, her uh, tossing this, this picture out on the table, a 32-year-old mother of four, wife, and uh, not even thinking that this is going to happen for her. And out of 900 people or so, 900 women or so, and I'm sure they weren't all ugly. And they picked her picture out of that particular lineup. And uh, it just amazes me at some people, they really get into the character part of it. And, and they say, you know, Marceline really looked like hell. Marceline really looked like a tramp. Marceline didn't have very good makeup on. Could you address that by chance? Yeah, um, I can tell you, you know, at first it kind of hurt my feelings. And then I, I realized, imagine. you know, um, okay, I had a makeup artist from Paramount. And he did my makeup for one and only one scene. And that was the scene at the bar where I'm eating an orange, I'm standing at the bar eating an orange. And he did an incredible job, I think, with my face. I think I look really great on camera. You know, cameras can either love you or hate you. You yes. know, there's that old saying of, boy, that camera really loves your face. Mm -hmm. And he did a beautiful job of makeup. But I would not let him do my makeup for any other scene. I insisted that I do my makeup my way to look like a slut. And I knew that if he <laughs> oh, made man. me look pretty, right, which is what he did when I saw the rushes. When you see the rushes, those are some people call them dailies, just to let you know. It's everything that was shot that day. They send it off for processing. It comes back, and then you get to watch what you did. So you can make corrections. The director can say, oh, I didn't like the lighting of that, or I think we ought to move that some other place. It didn't work or whatever their criticism is, they have a chance before we break down the set where we're too far into the movie, like toward the end of the movie and say, oh my gosh, Let's go back. I don't like yeah. what happened in the first 10 minutes. You know, wow. there's no way to correct it. Right. So we had dailies and I saw myself and I just said, I look way too good. I look way too pretty. You know, Pam was to be the really pretty one, the beautiful one. Right. And Deborah was supposed to look like more of a, a normal, you know, record driver. That's what she was. Tomboyish. Record, yeah. Tomboyish, yeah, record right. driver, no makeup kind of girl. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to look like the tramp. I really did. That was my part. And I felt like that I needed to look like I'd been road hard put up with. <laughs> That's a great song. You know, that coin that phrase Johnny Lee song yeah um I really wanted to look that way and so when fans come back and go oh my goodness you know Marceline looked like a ghost or Marceline was way too white in the office scene or Marceline you know all of her makeup was running down her face when she was hiding in the trailer okay now wait a second oh so the the makeup was running down her face hiding in the closet 
Well, most people think it was the closet, but I came out of the closet. I really came out of the bathroom. You came out of the bathroom. Yes. But and that's why not... was your makeup all running? Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> Nobody coins the phrase, she came out of the bathroom. Right. Okay. There is a phrase called coming out of the closet. Yes. Yes. So, but I was really coming out of the bathroom. It was a tiny 1955 metal without insulation, old trailer, really. It was ready for the junk heap. It was that bad. It was teeny tiny. And if you can imagine, I was in bed with Wes, the only bedroom in that place. And it was, it was so tiny. It's not like a bedroom we have nowadays in RVs. That's right. This was like tiny. And we had two cameras on shoulders, on the cameraman's shoulders, and the director in there, and the cinematographer in there. And there's me, and there's Wes, okay? And it is hotter than Haiti. Oh, my there. gosh. We're talking July. Okay. July, August, Houston, 100 and probably 100 degrees, 104 outside. And that was a metal can that we were in. It was an it just, oven. It was an oven. Okay. And we are like, you know, in, in, in movies, in movies, the way to do this, a sweating scene, is to spray your body down with Pam. Okay. You know, that yep. nonstick. That greasy stuff. Yeah. Spray yourself down with Pam and then spritz yourself with water so that the droplets roll down the oily skin. Right. We didn't have to do any of that. None of it that. It was so bad in there. <laughs> and um, the other thing is, I, I, I think you probably need to know, hear this. Um, I had to sign a release, a contractual legal uh, instrument. What on tarnation is because, that? Well, it was a release that they, the director said he must have a release from my husband. Because they were considering going for an R rating, and R back then was like really oh, racy, really? okay, racy. Yeah. And they had envisioned doing a semi naked or naked bedroom scene between me and Wes. Okay, now I've watched this movie multiple times, and folks, I don't remember seeing any racy scenes with Marceline and Wes. Trust me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we actually <laughs> filmed them. Again, they're on the cutting room floor, but um, I had to get a release from my husband, and I laughed. Well, I laughed at the director, Jim, because I said, this is so funny. This is so funny that you're asking me to ask him for a release. And he goes, why is that funny? We just need it for you know legal reasons. And I said, well, considering what my husband does for a living. And what does um, he do? And he said, what does he do? <laughs> And I said, he's a gynecologist. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh, my goodness. And so Jim just lost it. He just split a gut. I mean, he just lost it. He thought that was the, he didn't believe it was real. But that, that's yeah, an incredible I told, story yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. So anyway, we filmed it. It was wonderful, I thought. But they didn't use it. Oh. I have no idea. No I have no idea, idea why. why. No, mm-mm. Maybe the maybe the movie was lasting gonna last too long or I have no idea why they do what they do, but I can hmm. tell you this, when it went to T V it would have been gone anyway. Because in those days Right. Okay. In those days you didn't show R rated movies on T V. And the first time that it was released on T V was like nineteen eighty three, I okay. think. And it was on NBC. And they wouldn't have they there's no way they would have had any kind of bedroom scene like that on TV. Okay. And also, when they did go to TV, they had to edit out all the F words and the D words, you know, other than darn. Yeah. They had to edit all of that out. And when that happened, they had to find footage that didn't make the original movie. They took that footage that had been discarded but saved and they embedded it back into the film and made Urban Cowboy the TV version. So the TV version has John and Deborah actually dating one another. In other words, the original, it looks like they met one day and they got married the next. That's right. But yeah. in the new version, the TV, what we call the new version, the TV version was new scenes that the original Urban Cowboy fans 
moviegoers never saw. And so it was fresh and new to see it on TV. So you're saying that there's actually two separate versions, versions of this? Yes. Okay. There's the original Urban Cowboy and then the made-for-TV version. Okay. Wow. That's a that's a, a little fun fact right there. Right. So, all right, folks. <laughs> we're going to take another little break. And uh, again, if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to hear more of Connie's Urban Cowboy Secrets, come on back, smash that subscribe button, and we'll be right back.